Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my September 2020 reading wrap-up. I've just got the one book for you at the moment, that is Instructions for British Servicemen in France, 1944. Reproduced from the original, prepared by the Political Warfare Executive and issued by the Foreign Office London. Uh, this is published by the Bodleian Library as part of the University of Oxford, and I picked this up at Bletchley Park. It is basically like a, yeah, a reproduction of this manual that was given to British servicemen during the war. Um, kind of fascinating, kind of a fascinating read. Um, I've got obviously tabbed it out to do a full review and I found it particularly interesting because I'm kind of learning French and so I'm interested in our French culture. We have this great quote here on the back. If you should happen to imagine that the first pretty cra if you should happen to imagine that the first pretty French girl who smiles at you intends to dance the cancan -can or take you to bed, you will risk stirring up a lot of trouble for yourself and for our relations with the French. And uh, yeah, overall, really enjoy this. Give it a pretty solid four out of five. Uh, it's good for anyone who's interested in either the war and military history or in French culture, I would say. Although what's interesting is that the uh, introduction to this as well, it said it's one of the few tourist guides um, where, or, you know, tourist guide equivalents, I guess, where it tells you more about the people who are reading it than about the destination, which I thought was fascinating. So yeah, four out of five. And then I read A View From The Bridge by Arthur Miller. Um, so this is a play. And I've got to be honest, it was kind of forgettable. Um, you know, it was competent, it just didn't really capture my imagination too much. Um, so I have very little to say about it. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Um, but I would read more Arthur Miller in the future, and I think I have done in the past. Didn't he write Death of a Salesman? All right. Alright, just got the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is A Verdict by Agatha Christie. This is the Samuel French edition. It's a Christie play, and um, I've seen a few. I've seen Witness for the Prosecution, and I've also seen The Mousetrap, and both of those are very good. This was also very good, very well written, great characterisation, and lots to keep you interested. And uh, overall, yeah, I did really enjoy this book. I gave it a 5 out of 5. I think it's one of my favourite Christie plays. Uh, there is a murder in it, but it doesn't... Well, I suppose it does revolve around murder, but it's less about, like, the uh, investigation into a murder, like, uh, you know, the Poirot and Marple novels are. And overall, um, yeah, I just really enjoyed it, and um, it's probably my favourite of her plays, so I really want to see this perform now, you know? All right, just got the two books to update you on today. Uh, so the first is Made in America by Bill Bryson. This is non-fiction. Uh, basically like investigating American English and looking at the origins of a lot of terms and stuff. It was really fascinating from like a linguistic point of view, but it's just so dense um, and super long. So, I mean, I'm glad that I've read it. I'm also very glad that I read this as a bedtime book. I don't think I could have read this as a, a main book. It would have just been too intense. But um, yeah, I give it like 3.25 out of 5. Um, yeah, I think I would have found it more interesting if it had been about British English, maybe, but because uh, a lot of the terms or whatever, it's it's not like like talking about the I don't know washroom I just saw then, for example. But we don't use that in British English, so um, you know, products dating from the 1920s and early 30s often ended in X, Pyrex, Qtex, Kleenex, Windex, um, and I think of those. I don't know. We get Pyrex and Kleenex here. I think Windex is a window cleaner, but I don't know what it is. Qtex. Is that maybe something you put on the cuticles of your hands to stop you from biting them or something? I, I don't know. But yeah, uh, 3.25 out of 5. And then I read Talking Heads by Alan Bennett. Now, I have quite a specific problem with this, which is that um, I'd kind of built this up in my head a lot. I know it's like quite an iconic series. I know it was super influential for Charlie Heathcote uh, here on Booktube. Um, for his R. Doris books, I mean, they wouldn't exist without this, you know? Um, the problem is, is I actually think I enjoyed the R. Doris books more than I enjoyed Talking Heads. So, I don't know what that says about it. And, and I, I think my main feeling really is that this does very much feel like just a bunch of TV scripts that have just been published in a book, you know? So, R. Doris, um, Charlie's book, it feels as though it was written as a book first and foremost. This feels as though it was written for a TV series and very little thought has really gone into changing it into a book. I mean, there are a couple of intro essays and stuff, but um, yeah, it was okay. I just, you know, I think you might as well just watch Talking Heads, um, and I've never seen it, and now I don't feel like I need to see it, but I do feel as though you would enjoy it more watching it than you would reading the scripts. So, I don't know. Yeah, I give it like a 3.25 out of 5. All right, just a couple of books to update you on here. So the first one of these is uh, King Richard III by William Shakespeare. Which way round does it go? This way round. Uh, this is the really stunning um, Folio Society edition of it. Introductions by Douglas Seal, designs by Leslie Hurry. The introduction has the greatest introductory line to an introduction I've ever read. Shakespeare is not only a genius, he is popular. Also, he is dead. 
So yeah, um, I did really enjoy reading this. I mean, I'm kind of a bit of a history buff anyway, so I quite like the, you know, the real histories uh, behind a lot of Shakespeare's plays, so that's why I like Antony and Cleopatra and Julius Caesar quite a lot as well. Um, also, it helped that, I mean, you know, the battle at the end of this took place at Bosworth, and I've been to the site of the Battle of Bosworth. Uh, there was also an army camp near Tamworth, which is the town I grew up in. So, uh, and also it was just beautifully written as well. So I would say this is, you know, on the better edge of Shakespeare's plays. I'd love to see a performance of it. 4.25 out of 5. And then I read Problems at Palenza Bay and other stories. So this one's kind of cheating a bit, so do forgive me. Basically, I'm slowly working my way through all of Agatha Christie's published works, but there are some instances where there were different editions published in the UK and the US. So um, the stories in this one, um, let's see. One of them that was the Harlequin tea set and other stories. Uh, sorry, yeah, so the Harlequin tea set, which I've read the Harlequin tea set and other stories, uh, and the Regatta mystery, and I've read the Regatta mystery and other stories. And I think some of these are also um, in Witness for the Prosecution, which I'm going to be reading soon as well. So I didn't actually read it because it would have counted as a reread, and I remember all of the stories in it. But I'm giving it a 3.5 out of 5, and I basically have to count it as read because then I can tick it off on Goodreads and tick it off my list of Agatha Christie books. So, you know, yeah, it is what it is. Hello, Reasonably Quiet Dane here, because it's in the middle of the night, and I have a book to update you on, and that is Rendezvous in Russia by Lauren St. John. This is a Laura Marlin mystery. It's basically a middle grade series of mysteries. Um, I know of Lauren St. John because uh, I interviewed her for my book blog, socialbookshelves.com. She was one of the first authors I uh, interviewed, and she actually approached me about it as well, which was quite cool. And then I started seeing her books in charity shops, so I sort of picked them up as and when. Uh, yeah, this one was pretty good, basically, uh, the main character, what's her name again? Yeah, oh, Laura, sorry, Laura Marlin, yeah. And her dog, Sky. yes, yeah, Sky, her Siberian husky. Uh, they end up going to Russia to be in a movie. It's actually quite believable the way it's done. Um, I'd say it's, you know, it's 3.5, maybe a 3.75 out of 5. It's quite a competent one, and definitely one uh, if you have young kids. Although, you'll want to start with Dead Man's Cove, which is the first book. And then we also have Kidnapping the Caribbean and Kentucky Thriller. And probably more because this came out in 2013. So that was the year I interviewed her too. All right, guys, just the one book to update you on today, and that is The Unexpected Guest by Agatha Christie. Uh, well, it's by Charles Osborne, actually. Charles Osborne was chosen by the Agatha Christie estate to be, like, the official adapter of her work, essentially. And, um, yeah, it's a murder mystery. What's quite cool is you, you kind of follow the perpetrators of the mystery all the way through, or the, or the murder all the way through. Except you don't. I, I don't really know how to describe it without going into spoilers. But the plot itself is fantastic. But obviously it's a Christie plot. Um, Osborne doesn't quite write as well as Christie does. And you can tell that it's not Christie. I think um, Sophie Hanna d does a better job in her, you know, Christie continuation or whatever. As, uh, you know, officially approved by the Christie estate. But, um, yeah, it was a good little murder mystery overall. I did enjoy it. Um, I would give this probably a 3.75 out of 5. And I would recommend it. Hello. I would recommend it, but um, only to people who are like existing Christie fans. If you're new to Christie, you're going to want to start with something that's specifically Christie, you know? Hi guys, uh, me here, obviously, and I've only got one book to talk about today, which is The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. Actually, no, I do. I have another one over here. And um, this is possibly one of my favourite books of the year. Well, it is one of my favourite books of the year. It's possibly my favourite book of the year. Um, there's a movie of it as well, which I've seen years ago and don't really remember, so I'm assuming i remember thinking the movie was okay at the time but i i don't know the the real joy here was the writing style i uh, tabbed it out and did a full review of it and so you might want to look out for that because uh, i even said in that like normally in most books if you're lucky you get maybe two or three paragraphs where i'm like oh that's amazing i really wish i'd written that and in this one there were two different places where there were two back-to-back -back paragraphs that were incredible so uh yeah five out of five did enjoy and then we have a kind of a cheap book, which is A Witness for the Prosecution and Other Stories by Agatha Christie. Haven't read any of these stories, because again, this is another one that I got to tick off my list and realised that um, I've read all of them. Actually, The Witness for the Prosecution itself is the most recent one of the stories that I've read. And I'd seen the play of it first, so that was quite good. Um, but I can't remember what books the other were in now, but they were mostly, there were two different other books. Oh, one of them is The Listerdale Mystery, which I'm going to read next now to make sure that I don't accidentally forget. Like, I don't want to look at this and be like, oh, all of the stories in this were in uh, The Witness for the Prosecution, and then do that, you know? 
So I'm reading essentially, essentially you've got like two different editions of the same book almost. All right guys, just got the one book to update you on today and that is Born a Crime and Other Stories by Trevor Noah. So this is um, it's basically, a, I mean it calls it other stories, it's almost like essays or they're like, um, they sort of delves into different parts of his life basically but it mostly focuses on his um, childhood in South Africa. He was literally born a crime to a white father and a black mother and so it kind of, covers all of the racism and you know bigotry that he dealt with as he was growing up um, but it's really you sort of engagingly written and really well told it doesn't necessarily give you too much about his like later career so if you want to know about his comedy and that sort of stuff it's not really going to help but if um you know you want to i guess broaden your mind a bit and learn a little bit more about what it was like during apartheid this is a great book for that so i would give it a four out of five and would recommend all right, guys, I just have the one book to update you on today, and that's Nightfall Part 1 by Isaac Asimov. This kind of goes hand with Nightfall Part 2, which I've already read, but honestly, Nightfall Part 2, I thought, at least, was a lot better, so I would recommend that over this one. Um, basically, it's Asimov's short stories with his little introductions, which he's great at, by the way, uh, and they're presented chronologically as well. So I think that might be why I enjoyed Part 2 more, because they were like his older works, well, newer works, I guess, but that he wrote when he was older and, and had had more practice. And also they were shorter stories too, which for me was great, because I think Asimov's at his best when he's playing with ideas, you know? So the fact that they were shorter stories meant that he could try more ideas. So overall, I, I did still enjoy it. I'd give it a 3.5 out of 5. And I can see why Asimov was annoyed that all of his friends, uh, all of his fans said that Nightfall was like his best short story. Because he was like 21 when he wrote it. And it, it, it's okay, like it's a good story, but I don't think it's his best. And um, I can see why that would annoy him, yeah. Okay everybody, Dane and Biggie here, he's decided he's going to help me. Uh, I've read another book, I've read A Celebration by Spike Milligan, The Best of Milligan, with cringeworthy groveling from Eric Sykes, Sir Harry Seacombe, Dennis Norden, Ronnie Scott, Mrs Gladys Scroke, etc. Biggie, are you, come this way, come this way then Biggs. Come on. We'll get out of the way, do something. There we go. There we go. Come sit on my lap, have you? So uh, yeah, I enjoyed this. It's like a, essentially like an anthology of Milligan's various different bits. God damn it, cat! Um, so we've got some poetry in there, some stories, some stuff for children, some f uh, photographs, some of his illustrations. The only official tribute to Britain's best love comedy star. Hila a hila Ow! A hilarious collection of Milliganese prose, poetry, scripts, and scribbles. Scores of unique photographs. Tributes from a host of personalities who have known and worked with Spike. Uh, I enjoyed it. It did actually take me longer to read than I was expecting, um, but yeah, it was good. I would give it like a probably a 3.5 out of 5. I don't know what else to tell you really. It's Spike Milligan, mate. Um, very whimsical, very silly, very cool. Lots of like goon show scripts and stuff in here as well. Hello everybody. Guess who can't find his tripod? I have a couple of books to update you on. So, is it just these two? So I read The Listerdale Mystery by Agatha Christie. This is a short story collection. I did skip a few near the end because, for example, The Golden Ball was in here. Jane in Search of a Job. I feel like I've read that one under a different title. Um, does it say the copyright for each of the stories? That's odd that they haven't included like the first publications of them or whatever. But, um, yeah. Uh, the Raj's Emerald. I think I'd read that one as well, but actually that was one where I didn't realise I'd read it till near the end. But overall, I did enjoy it. I gave it probably a pretty solid 4 out of 5. It's Agatha Christie's short stories, and I love her short stories. This probably isn't the best collection, but it's not bad. And, uh, you know, if you see it going in a charity shop, pick it up. And then I read uh, The Beatles' Yellow Submarine from the song by John Lennon and Paul McCartney. And this is interesting because it's uh, first edition first NEL edition August 1968 um, and I got this from a big job lot I got on eBay and it was great 4.5 out of 5 made me want to re-watch the Yellow Submarine movie as well it is basically like a novelization of the movie but it's really beautiful like look inside it it's great and like sometimes you've got like entire page like some this has got a bit more text on it and then here like you got no text and uh, like the sea of monsters it's all very cool stuff. So yeah, 4.5 out of 5. And then I read The Shadow Over Innsmouth and Other Stories of Horror by H.P. Lovecraft. 
So that's got um, the Shadow Over Innsmouth. Actually, I was talking to someone recently who put on a show that was based on the Shadow Over Innsmouth, which is very cool. Uh, the Festival, The Colour Out of Space, Imprisoned with the Pharaohs, um, which I believe is the one that he ghost wrote for uh, Harry Houdini. I can't remember if it was that particular one, but there was one particular story he ghost wrote for Houdini. And unfortunately, I'd read it before, um, and it wasn't particularly good as well, but... Uh, in the Walls of Eryx, The Transition of Juan Romero and The Outsider. Uh, all in all, it was a pretty good little introduction to uh, Lovecraft. I would probably give this a 3.75 out of 5. It's only the second Lovecraft book that I've read and I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about him. But um, if you're interested in Lovecraft and you've been thinking about giving him a go, this would probably be a pretty decent one to, to go with, you know? But anyway, those are all of the books that I read in September. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.